there are several steps you should take before you start transacting in the Forex market. Up next is a complete guide to starting trading Forex. The foreign exchange market is the world's most liquid market, with more than 5 trillion a day exchanging hands. The market is liquid 24 hours a day, 5 days a week, opening in the evening on Sunday during North American trading hours and closing at 5 p.m. on Friday evening during the same time zone. If you are a beginner and just dipping your toe into trading the Forex markets, you should consider following the market and increasing your understanding of why exchange rates move before risking your hard-earned capital. Learn about the financial markets. The financial markets allow investors, businesses, governments and central banks a place to transact in an open market, exchanging their risks to meet their financial needs. A corporate treasurer might need to exchange profits in euros into dollars, just as a speculator believes that the euro USD will rise. There are thousands of reasons why exchange rates and prices moved over a short period of time, generating noise as participants look for an optimal price to enter or exit a position. Before you start trading, you should learn about the different types of markets available to trade, and which one you are most interested in following. In addition to trading Forex, you can also consider trading commodities, indices, and shares. The best way to learn about a market is to read about why others believe it's moving and the different catalysts that might drive the price or exchange rate in a specific direction. For example, you might start with looking for a style of analysis that is generally provided by reputable brokers such as Alpari. Your goal is to see what type of analysis they offer and what type of actionable ideas come from the analysis they provide. You can also look through a broker's education section and see if they provide information about why the markets move. In addition to looking at a broker's education section, you can scan the markets for websites that focus on financial markets education. Learn to do your own analysis. There are two main types of analysis that Forex traders generally focus on, which include fundamental and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis is the study of macro events that will alter the course of a currency pair. Technical analysis is the study of price action, including looking at momentum, trends and reversal patterns. Fundamental analysis. The fundamentals surrounding the Forex markets is based on the interest rates markets of each of the currencies that make up an exchange rate. For example, if you plan on trading the Euro USD, you want to have a gauge of where interest rates are likely going in the Eurozone as well as the United States. In general, the stronger an economy, the more likely the central bank is to raise interest rates, which help drive up market interest rates. The reverse is also the case for a weaker economy where the central bank and market forces will likely drive interest rates lower. The best way to determine if an economy is strong is to be able to evaluate countries' financial information. This could include their employment information, their GDP, as well as inflation information such as the consumer price index. Most reputable brokers will provide you with a Forex economic calendar where you can see what economists expect relative to history as well as the actual release. What is important about fundamentals is that each new piece of information can alter the direction of an exchange rate. If the economic data is greater than or worse than expected, an exchange rate will move to reflect the new information. Technical analysis. Technical analysis is the study of historical prices. Although the past is not always a predictor of the future, different changes following specific studies can give you a gauge of where prices might move in the futures. Some of the more popular technical analysis studies include evaluating momentum. Momentum is the acceleration or deceleration of price changes. If you are interested in learning about technical analysis, you can look at your broker's education section, or follow their technical analysis forecasts. There are also several websites that will provide you with education on different types of technical analysis tools. Some of the more popular include the MACD, the RSI, and Stochastics. Find a good broker. Your Forex broker facilitates the execution of transactions. While this is their most important function, there are many features a broker like Alpari brings to the table which you should be aware of prior to depositing funds at that broker. First, do some due diligence. Look up reviews by your prospective broker and make sure there are no red flags. Fraud alerts or issues with withdrawing funds are the most important. You also want to make sure there is efficient customer service. 
You do not want to frustrate yourself by finding a broker who will not answer questions. The next step is to evaluate the platform. Does the broker have an education section or generate technical analysis forecasts? Additionally, you want to make sure that your broker offers clients a financial calendar. Additionally, you want to find out about the leverage they provide to clients. Higher levels of margin will provide you the option to generate more revenue. Start with a demo account. Most reputable brokers will offer you real money accounts as well as demonstration accounts. A demo account is one where you are trading paper money, not real capital. Most good demonstration accounts offer nearly all the products that are available to trade will a real money account. The prices will likely be in real time or close to real time. In addition, you will have access to most of the education and forecasting information your broker provides to real money clients. Once you feel like you're ready for a real money account you can make the switch from a demo account to real funds. Summary. There are several steps you should take before you start transacting in the Forex market. You need to first learn about the financial markets and the type of information you can learn about prior to trading. Try to learn about both fundamental and technical analysis. Find a Forex broker that you believe is trustworthy and provides a plethora of information. Lastly, use a demo account before you begin to risk real money. Three things I wish I knew when I started trading Forex. Trading Forex, what I learned. 1. Trading Forex is not a shortcut to instant wealth. 2. Excessive leverage can turn winning strategies into losing ones. 3. Retail sentiment can act as a powerful trading filter. Everyone comes to the Forex market for a reason, ranging between solely for entertainment to becoming a professional trader. I started out aspiring to be a full-time, self-sufficient Forex trader. I had been taught the perfect strategy. I spent months testing it and back tests showed how I could make $25,000 to $35,000 a year off of a $10,000 account. My plan was to trade Forex for a living and let my account compound until I was so well off, I wouldn't have to work again in my life. I was dedicated and I committed myself to the plan 100%. Sparing you the details, my plan failed. It turns out that trading 300k lots on a $10,000 account is not very forgiving. I lost 20% of my account in 3 weeks. I didn't know what hit me. Something was wrong. Luckily, I stopped trading at that point and was fortunate enough to land a job with a Forex broker. I spent the next couple of years working with traders around the world and continued to educate myself about the Forex market. It played a huge role in my development to be the trader I am today. Three years of profitable trading later, it's been my pleasure to join the team at Daily FX and help people become successful or more successful traders. The point of me telling this story is because I think many traders can relate to starting off in this market, not seeing the results that they expected and not understanding why. These are the three things I wish I knew when I started trading Forex. 1. Forex is not a get-rich-quick opportunity. Contrary to what you've read on many websites across the web, Forex trading is not going to take your $10,000 account and turn it into $1 million. The amount we can earn is determined more by the amount of money we are risking rather than how good our strategy is. The old saying, it takes money to make money, is an accurate one, forex trading included. But that doesn't mean it is not a worthwhile endeavor, after all, there are many successful forex traders out there that trade for a living. The difference is that they have slowly developed over time and increased their account to a level that can create sustainable income. I hear about traders all the time targeting 50%, 60% or 100% profit per year, or even per month, but the risk they are taking on is going to be pretty similar to the profit they are targeting. In other words, in order to attempt to make 60% profit in a year, it's not unreasonable to see a loss of around 60% of your account in a given year. But Rob, I am trading with an edge, so I am not risking as much as I could potentially earn, you might say. That's a true statement if you have a strategy with a trading edge. Your expected return should be positive, but without leverage, it is going to be a relatively tiny amount. And during times of bad luck, we can still have losing streaks. When we throw leverage into the mix, that's how traders attempt to target those excessive gains. Which in turn is how traders can produce excessive losses. 
Leverage is beneficial up to point, but not when it can turn a winning strategy into a loser. 2. Leverage can be a winning strategy to lose money. This is a lesson I wish I had learned earlier. Excessive leverage can ruin an otherwise profitable strategy. Let's say I had a coin that when heads was hit, you would earn $2, but when tails was hit, you would lose $1, would you flip that coin? My guess is absolutely you would flip that coin. You'd want to flip it over and over. When you have a 50-50 chance between making $2 or losing $1, it's a no-brainer opportunity that you'd accept. Now let's say I have the same coin, but this time if heads is hit, you would triple your net worth, but when tails was hit, you would lose every possession you own. Would you flip that coin? My guess is you would not because one bad flip of the coin would ruin your life. Even though you have the exact same percentage advantage in this example as the example above, no one in their right mind would flip this coin. The second example is how many Forex traders view their trading account. They go all in on one or two trades and end up losing their entire account. Even if their trades had an edge like our coin flipping example, it only takes one or two unlucky trades to wipe them out completely. This is how leverage can cause a winning strategy to lose money. So how can we fix this? A good start is by using no more than 10x effective leverage. 3. Using sentiment as a guide can tilt the odds in your favor. The third lesson I've learned should come as no surprise to those that follow my articles, using the IG Client Sentiment Tool IGCS. I've written many articles about this topic. It's the best tool I've ever used and is still a part of almost every trading strategy I am using, present day. IGCS is a free tool that tells us how many traders are long compared to how many traders are short each major currency pair. It's meant to be used as a contrarian index where we want to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Using it as a direction filter for my trades has turned my trading career completely around. Learn from my mistakes. If I could tell my younger self three things before I began trading Forex, this would be the list I would give. Ultimately though, if you are just starting out in the Forex market, the best thing you can do is take time to learn as much as you can, starting with the basics. Read guides, keep up to date with the latest news and follow market analysts on social media. Forex Trading Tips FAQs How much money can you make trading Forex? Due to the availability of leverage, Forex traders can make a return on a single trade that is multiples of the margin they used to open the trade. However, leverage is a double-edged sword in that big gains can also mean big losses. Therefore, reliance on excessive leverage as a strategy typically leads to destruction of your account capital over the long run. This is because it only takes one adverse market move to drive the market far enough and trigger substantial losses. Your expectations on a return on investment is a critical element. When traders expect too much from their account, they rely on excessive leverage and that typically triggers a losing account over time. View Forex like you would any other market and expect normal returns by using conservative amounts of no leverage. Since Forex is a 24-hour market, the convenience of trading based on your availability makes it popular among day traders, swing traders, and part-time traders. Regardless of your style, use small, if any, amounts of leverage. If you were to expand the list to a fourth thing learned when starting to trade FX, what would it be? I touched on leverage above. We researched millions of live trades and compiled our results in a Traits of Successful Traders guide. In the guide we touch on risk to reward ratios and how it is important. With humans being human, we also touch on the psychological element that goes along with trading and why we may still make poor choices even if we know what is right. Sometimes our biggest obstacle is between our ears. What is Forex trading? How does Forex trading work? In the Forex market, you buy or sell currencies. Placing a trade in the foreign exchange market is simple. The mechanics of a trade are very similar to those found in other financial markets, like the stock market, so if you have any experience in trading, you should be able to pick it up pretty quickly. The objective of Forex trading is to exchange one currency for another in the expectation that the price will change. More specifically, that the currency you bought will increase in value compared to the one you sold. An exchange rate is simply the ratio of one currency valued against another currency. 
For example, the USD CHF exchange rate indicates how many US dollars can purchase one Swiss franc, or how many Swiss francs you need to buy one US dollar. How to read a Forex quote currencies are always quoted in pairs, such as GBP, USD or USD, JPY. The reason they are quoted in pairs is that, in every foreign exchange transaction, you are simultaneously buying one currency and selling another. How do you know which currency you are buying and which you are selling? Excellent question. This is where the concepts of base and quote currencies come in. Base and quote currency. Whenever you have an open position in Forex trading, you are exchanging one currency for another. Currencies are quoted in relation to other currencies. When buying, the exchange rate tells you how much you have to pay in units of the quote currency to buy one unit of the base currency. When selling, the exchange rate tells you how many units of the quote currency you get for selling one unit of the base currency. The base currency represents how much of the quote currency is needed for you to get one unit of the base currency. If you buy your USD this simply means that you are buying the base currency and simultaneously selling the quote currency. In caveman talk, buy your sell USD. You would buy the pair if you believe the base currency will appreciate gain value relative to the quote currency. You would sell the pair if you think the base currency will depreciate lose value relative to the quote currency. With so many currency pairs to trade, how do Forex brokers know which currency to list as the base currency and the quote currency? Fortunately, the way that currency pairs are quoted in the Forex market is standardized. You may have noticed that currencies quoted as a currency pair are usually separated with a slash character. Just know that this is a matter of preference and the slash may be omitted or replaced by a period, a dash, or nothing at all. For example, some traders may type your USD as your USD or just EURUSD. They all mean the same thing.